Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. And once uh, it's also my first uh, intervention to the new house, I also would like to congratulate to all of you who have been elected or re-elected uh, to the European Parliament. And I think that you have already witnessed uh, uh, political debate which was uh, truly uh, political. I think we have clearly seen what would be the new debating lines uh, of uh, this parliament. It's clear that uh, those uh, uh, who are uh, for Europe must and I believe uh, will work together. And therefore I would like to thank very much to all the leaders of the groups uh, Mr. Weber, Mr. Pitella, Mr. Verhofstadt, Madam Harms, and all of you who have been clearly supporting the European ideas and European cooperation for the future. I also believe that support for Europe in our member states very much uh, depends on uh, how the Europe is explained to the citizens by the national leaders, how the national leaders can actually assume the role of being European leaders at the same time. I think it's a time to realize that these two roles cannot be divided, that the national leaders are European leaders as well, and that they have this double responsibility towards their own countries, but also towards the European Union as well. And I think that uh, we also have to be uh, clear that uh, the election results was also very much affected by the fact that we are emerging from what was the worst economic crisis in the Second World War. So, of course, the citizens have been frustrated, and rightly so, because let's be honest, it took us too long to find the appropriate cure, to find appropriate solutions to the crisis. But I think that after all this, we can also say very clearly that we rise to the challenge, we help to overcome the problems, and that we will be working better if we work uh, together on overcoming the uh, remaining economic problems uh, we have in Europe. But we have introduced new economic governance. We made our bank healthier and stronger, and we managed to cut them off finally from the taxpayer's uh, purse. And uh, therefore, I just would like to remind uh, our colleague, Mr. Verhofstadt, that uh, one of the architects of this uh, new system, Mr. Rennie, is now currently working in his group, and I believe that they would have uh, uh, ample space for the healthy discussions on how to uh, progress in this area in the future. Several of you referred to the nomination of the Jean-Claude Juncker as a Commission's President as a major achievement of the last summit. And uh, I think that was very correct description, because I think we have seen how the democratic will of the people was respected by the leaders, how it was uh, uh, reflected in uh, this uh, nomination, and I believe it really paid the way for a very close and good cooperation between the new President of the European Commission and uh, the European Parliament. I think we have also seen from the statement of uh, President uh, Van Rompuy that also the European Council is looking for new ways how to use the, the treaty frameworks for even closer cooperation with his House. We, uh, for the first time, will probably use uh, the articles allowing us a good union programming among all institutions. The European Council is going to use uh, uh, the, the article provisions on the new strategic guidelines. And I believe that this will give us the new possibilities how to cooperate between all European institutions. I think that uh, this would allow us to establish a new frame in which we can act faster, in which we can adopt the decisions uh, uh, in a much more speedier way, and which would allow us to tackle what we see as uh, one of the major problems in Europe, and this is implementation gap. But very often we uh, undertake uh, the decisions, but it takes us simply too long time to implement them. To conclude, I also would like to highlight uh, the importance of all pro-European forces to work together. Why? Because I think that we need to prevent that Europe would become xenophobic, Europe would become uh, anti-minorities, be it national, religious, sexual, ethnic, and I think we have seen a lot uh, of these indications already from this part of the parliament, and therefore I think it would be pretty important that we would defend the fundamental freedoms, and that we would defend the freedoms the Europeans have been uh, fighting for for many decades. Because otherwise, I would be very much afraid that we could end up in Europe where we would be discussing again along the national lines, introducing national or sometimes even nationalistic borders, and I think that the Europeans do not simply uh, deserve this. 
What we need is to restore trust in Europe by supporting growth, giving uh, back uh, the chance to the young people to get the job and to plan for the bright future, that we need to work on how to make European Union more uh, competitive and our economy more performant. And I think that we need in this way to secure the leading place of Europe in the world. World and globalization need Europe. They need our values, our respect for social justice, for environment, respect for human rights. And I think that this should be the agenda upon which all pro-European forces in this House should work for the next five years. Thank you very much, Mr. President.